Gator here, and today we are going to be making a functional prop. As you can read in the description below, we are going to be turning this Busby Air Warriors Predator, which was wonderfully donated to me by Mongoose Jake. Thank you very much, Jake, when I put the call out to a few of my friends to see if anyone had these, and thankfully, you know, the King of Busby did have a few spares, so... He sent me one that was a little bit more worse for wear, so he didn't send me anything, you know, pristine. So, you know, I think he's okay with it. But we're going to be turning this into a short hunting rifle from the Fallout series, more specifically from Fallout 4 or Fallout 76. Uh, Fallout is one of my favorite game series of, you know, probably in a while. And I really enjoy all the aesthetics of it. I like the story. I love the plot lines. Um, it's just, to me, it's always been a very interesting series. So, in Fallout 4 and 76, when you first come across hunting rifles, they're short. And by that, I'll show you the picture here of what I'm talking about. Uh, they don't have a stock on. It almost looks like a sawed-off shotgun, and it has no barrel. Now, the only difference between what I'm going to be doing with this and what the game actually does is the game actually does have... Their rifles are magazine-fed. They're, sh they're small magazines. It's only, I think, like five shots when you first get them. But I'm not going to convert this to a magazine because I want to keep the aesthetic look of it. So this will still only be a single-shot bolt-action rifle, but it's going to look, hopefully, just like that one. So we're going to have a lot of work on this. Um, just... It's going to be mostly cosmetic. Um, I'm not worried about do, upping the performance on this one because these are the internals of this are a little weird, and I'll show you that later on once we start taking this apart. But what we're going to be basically doing is cutting the barrel off, chopping the stock off, filling the back end with uh, styrene and epoxy putty to make everything all nice and smooth. And then from there, we're going to be doing a nice paint job over everything, and also going to weather this as well as also put the uh, cloth or uh, surgical tape like around here to mimic what was on the actual like game asset. So with that being said, let's get started on this. Also, I'm starting this in mid-February because today just happens to be a really, really nice day. And I wanted to get something started. So let's see when we'll actually get this done. So, let's get to it. Okay, so I've drawn some lines on the blaster to know where I'm going to cut off. Uh, this is just taking really the stock off. And this is where I'm going to shorten the barrel down to. Okay, and here we have the stock cut down. Uh, it looks a little rough. I got to do some sanding on it, but this is just to show how it is and how it's going to fit in the hand. And honestly, even though it looks short, it does actually fit really nicely. So very happy with that. I've also already started doing some light sanding here. I started taking off the raised Busby logo and all of those markings here. So Okay, so this is the piece of styrene that I cut out for the back of the blaster. I apologize, I did not actually record this. It was a very slapdash way of doing it. Uh, this is where I'm going to be applying some E6000 in order to hold the piece in place. Uh, what I will be doing is, it's not just going to be the E6000 that holds this on, it's also going to be reinforced on the inside with some epoxy putty i'm just doing this so that it can actually stay on and i know it will hold for a little bit before i apply the pressure of putting on the putty and all that stuff so i wanted a bond i wanted it to adhere to the plastic first before i really overly bonded it to the plastic so that's what we're doing here and then i'm just going to let this sit and cure and then i will get back to this after that is all said and done. Two weeks later. Okay, so we're back after... I don't know how long it's been since I actually last worked on this thing, but 
Uh, needless to say, we're back anyway. So the E6000 along here is dry. Um, yeah, what I was originally going to plan on doing was I was going to put some on this side to try and like keep it down and split this so that I can still open it up, trim this and all that down. But what I'm going to do instead is, because I'm only like thinking about it, I'm like, this is still fairly, it's going to be fairly comfortable. Plus, it's also going to get wrapped in the um, the surgical tape, once I, which I still actually need to pick up. But we're getting a weird warm spot uh, coming this weekend. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the putty work. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to reinforce here so that this will be really good and epoxied into the shell itself so that it has a good grip on this side of the styrene then what i'm going to do is on this side i'm going to build up some epoxy putty here and then fit everything together so that i'm able So that I'm able to figure out where I need to push down, like get it to fit. So that it closes this gap because I still want the gap to be closed. And then once that's all set and dry, um, knock this down, sand everything, try and get it prepped because I'm going to try and get this painted in a few days when I get really nice weather. Uh, some of the other things I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the gap here. In here with epoxy putty as well so that this is a solid piece um, or a solid trigger well instead of it just kind of being open and I'm also going to try well one I, ooh, I gotta clean this up because I I do need to paint the bolt um, so what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna fill in here with epoxy and a little ball here as well because I've done that in one that I've done in the past and I mean I'm not upgrading the spring so it does it's not really for a structural purpose but it's just to fill in the gaps to make it look more complete and give it that more um, realistic feel to it lastly I'm still not decided on whether or not I want to put the iron sight on here or not I may leave it off just so because with the short rifle, yes, it does have it on there in the game asset, but like in reality, this is just basically going to look like a cut down hunting rifle, a bolt action hunting rifle. So I'm just going to leave that off. And then this way I'll have hopefully everything prepared for paint on Sunday. So I'm just going to get to work on this and I don't know if I'm going to time lapse it or if I'm just going to uh, cut and show you what it looks like after I'm done because oh, if I put the glove on the right way, wow, that was spastic. There we go. So I have my epoxy stick here. It's all-purpose uh, Gorilla Glue brand epoxy. So, and it's a two-part. What you do is you just slice off uh, the chunk that you want. You start kneading it together until it becomes one solid color. Then you know it's actually mixed, and then you put it to wherever the hell it needs to go. The uh, reason I'm wearing the gloves is because I do not want to get this crap all over my hand. So, a little pro tip right there. So. Let's start getting on to it.
Okay, so all of my putty work is now done for the most part. So this has to cure now. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to look at this and just go, wow, that looks like utter dog shit. But you know what? It doesn't really matter at this stage in the game. Yes, it's going to be some aesthetic looks. But right now, I just need this to cure. And I need to cure, have it cure a little over of what I have filled it at because once I start sanding all of this down, all of this rough crap that you see, like here, that's all going to be gone. And then what I want to try and do is I want to try and blend the plastic and the putty to basically be one thing. So when I do go and paint this, you, all you're going to see is the blaster. You're not going to see, oh, there's the putty work, there's the putty work, that kind of thing. So, yeah, um, if you're wondering why I was doing this or if it was cut out or not, but I had actually considered just uh, leaving either A, leaving this part out, or B, just kind of like cutting off the rail section, so to speak, to see how it would fit in. But when I put it back in the blaster, I'm like, uh, it'd be a lot of putty to really kind of fill in what I would lose if this goes out because there is the opening here and... Not so much on that side because that's the open bolt, but it would be more putty work that, yes, I could do it. I just don't have the desire to. So, yeah, this will be back in as part of the build itself. But I have my paint scheme of how I want everything, how I'm going to do everything and all. So it's going to be fine. I just need this stuff to cure for a few days. And then once this is cured, I'll be able to sand it um, very carefully, get everything sanded, and then hopefully I will have it all done before I get my nice day on Sunday. And this is Thursday I'm filming this, so I have like two and a half days, give or take, for this stuff to cure and for me to um, sand it and make it look all pretty. And hopefully by then I'll be able to get probably not all of my painting done, but at least god willing the primer coats on it because if i can get the primer coats on it i will be happy and i'll feel i have made um enough progress on here to warrant probably another couple of days or weeks of, of walking away from this so yeah that's where this part stands so i'll see you after this is all sanded to show you how it looks and how everything fits together and then We'll get into painting. Several days later. Okay, so I it was nice enough. I was able to get my painting started, and I'm fairly positive I started doing this process um, ass backwards. But I've already taped off what is going to be um, as best as I can guess metallic, or you know, going from the reference photo to what would be on the actual blaster itself. Um, it looks like it really blends in because I used a light gray um, vinyl dye as a primer coat. Yes, the this still looks like dog crap, but this is going to be getting covered up by the uh, tape. So I will be able to kind of tape it off in a way that the good majority of that is going to be covered. So I'm not too, too worried about that. Uh, you can see my uh, the metallic that I went with a little better on here. I went with, after doing everything in the gray, I did a base coat of gunmetal, and then I lightly went over it with a Rust-Oleum silver metallic to just try and knock down the dark of the gunmetal and still make it look really, really nice. So... Um, plus, also, once I start weathering this, it's going to darken things a lot more. And I didn't want the metal or the metallic looking pieces getting too, too darkened. So here you can see the barrel with the bit of silver metallic on there. So, yeah, I have to say I'm very happy with how this is coming out. So I'm going to let this actually sit and cure for a little while because... I now have to tape off all of this nice metallic so that I can put the uh, brown, uh, the satin brown on and then 
this way I can also do the black dry brushing so that I can make it look nice and uh, wood like so that's going to be coming up in a little bit but I'll show you the dry brushing probably once that's done because honestly I am very bad at dry brushing I'm still working at it it's you know that's what this all is is just you know you know not just finding skill sets and me showing you how to do things but me also trying to figure out how to do it myself so yeah i gotta say so far so far the paint's coming along very nicely i'm very happy with it and uh while you can sort of kind of see things a little bit down here i have to say with the paint on here it's very it it blends the uh putty work that i did in pretty damn well so I have to say I'm very happy with that aspect of it. So, all right. So I'll see you in a moment uh, to show you how everything else has progressed. Okay. So just ignore the majority of this. This is side thing that I'm doing while I was working on this and waiting for paint to dry and all that kind of stuff. So uh, if you want to see what that is, go check out my Instagram page because I'm going to post it up there. But, oh my God, this looks good this is looking really good the gunmetal silver with against the satin brown looks really nice um i'm going to actually let this cure overnight uh possibly an extra day or two because it still feels wet um thankfully it's not not leaving fingerprints so that's a good thing but yeah oh this is looking so nice this it really is this is looking really really good i'm very happy with how it's coming out so this is going to go to the side for and let you know dry dry for a few days probably before i do the black dry brushing to give it the wood grain texture and then once that is done i'm going to do a pretty much a a full assembly i think and then do all of the, the i'll put the uh, wrap on i'll do the weathering and then i'm going to give it a i think i'm going to give it a clear coat if not what i'm going to do is this i'm going to put every i'm going to do the dry brushing do the clear coat all separately and then put everything together then put the wrap on weather that and then just do a clear coat on kind of this back end area so it doesn't hit any of the moving parts since those are already going to be clear coated and i think that's what i'll do yeah i think that's how i'm going to do it so yeah let this cure You'll see the, I'll, I'll show you the dry brushing when that's all done. And then hopefully the next thing you'll see is actually everything completed. But if I can think of something to maybe throw in between here and there, I'll do that. But if not, hopefully this will be completed very soon. Okay, so the short hunting rifle is done. And I got to say, I am really happy with how it came out. I did have a few hiccups with the finalizing of this. Uh, you'll notice that I did wind up putting the cap on the bottom here. And that's actually because I noticed that the bottom of the grip, I missed a little bit of paint, but the reason being for that is because my brown satin that I use for the wood base crapped out on me as I was finishing up this side of the uh, blaster. So I was not happy with that at all, but I was able to make do with what I had. The weathering and dry brushing on this thing honestly came out, in my opinion, probably some of the best I've ever done. Um, and that's saying a bit because I don't do a lot of weathering, but for what I have done in the past of weathering, I'm really happy with how this came out. Uh, the wood doesn't have too much weathering on it because, stupid me, after I had put the black on here to uh, simulate the wood grain, I clear-coated everything, 
And as I was trying to put the washers on, all it did was just beat up and wipe clean off. So unfortunately, I couldn't do with that. So I went a little heavier on weathering the metal, but honestly, it came out really nice. The Strickland mud definitely gave it a nice uh, brown rust effect all over it. And then using the, oh crap, I forget the name of the other brown, um, but I'll list it down below. Uh, just for highlights and like adding a little bit of old rust at the end of the barrel where you know it was where the barrel was cut to make it short and all that stuff. Uh, honestly, it came out really nice. I am very impressed with it. I had some feedback. Uh, I I did share this with a couple of community members because uh, they were trusted sources and I wanted their feedback on it. Mostly everyone did come back with, they did like it. Well, actually, everyone came back saying they did like it. I did get a couple of tips from uh, Valor of uh, Valor Lionheart. So thank you very much for all those tips. I wasn't able to really implement them because one of the things Valor was telling me is to add a newer rust to it to kind of get a an orange and like kind of, or burnt sienna, mix it up and all that. But... Unfortunately, with the paints that I had on hand at the moment, I really couldn't make a good orange. I have a yellow, I have a red, but when I mixed them up, it looked awful. So, I stuck with what I had for the time being, but it's good to know for next time if I have to apply rust to anything. So, I have kind of my way to go on it. Uh, the weathering on the wrap, honestly, I really do like how it came out. It definitely looks like it's dirty, it's grimy, it's been worn and used over the years. So, I'm really happy with how everything came out. Now, I didn't do any performance mods on this because, again, this was mainly meant to be a prop piece. I did make, not really two concessions, but two overall changes to my initial idea of everything. One was I did actually change out the trigger spring on this because the trigger spring that I had, for some reason, when I reassembled everything, was not returning the spring, uh, returning the trigger back to ready position because it was getting stuck. And I wasn't sure why because I was reassembling everything properly. But I put in a stronger spring for the trigger. There's no extra pull on it, um, but it is strong enough to where when I let go, it does return to its proper uh, rest or proper position. Uh, the other thing was this. Looking at this, I'm sure if it was taken out in public would definitely get somebody in trouble, which is why I took a tip, the tip of the original barrel, cut that down so it could be a nice little add-on so you do technically have the orange tip. Uh, the only thing is though, it kind of snaps on and you snap it back off because I didn't re-clear coat everything or at least just yet. So the all this dry brushing on the front of the barrel is still able to get scraped off. So if you snap it on and pull it off, you're going to be taking off some of that uh, nice weathering. And also my whole goal was to not only make it look good, which honestly I think I really did, but also to still keep it functional, which it is. Now, I didn't do anything to the barrel. It's still the original Busby one, so it would work best with old Busby suction cup darts, but it does work with Nerf Elite darts and the Elite 2.0. These are the ones from my Trailblazer, and it works. Another Nerf Elite dart. I think this is... I forgot what this was from. I think it may have been a Star Wars blaster because they have they tend to have those red darts. But And also, if you happen to have a surplus of these X-Shot darts or the style of X-Shot darts, it actually works best with those. Also, I did remove the dart stop back here. So if you are using this and loading a dart, you do have to like really seated in before you close the breech. So there you have it. My Fallout 4, Fallout 76 short hunting rifle prop build slash functional prop build is in the bag and I'm really happy with it. So 
And that's where we're going to end it for this video. And as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you think the hunting, the short hunting rifle came out, or if you happen to play Fallout, what is your favorite weapon? My personal one is the lever action rifle from 76, but that's just me. Um, oh, and don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And if you want to drop us a line or a letter, we have a P.O. box. Uh, address is down in the description below. I'm paying for it, so I might as well try and use it. <laughs> but again, thank you all very much for joining us. I'll see you guys next time. Later.